Hey guys, it's Ann, and today we are going to take a look in on Blue. Uh, we have some harvesting to do. I actually took one of my bins, not Blue, and put it on top of Blue over here so that it would have a lot of surface area to dry out and uh, the worms would have a chance to move out. And since it's another mixed bin, then I was pretty confident that, you know, we wouldn't have problems with uh, mixed worms and whatnot. Let me get a tray here, move all of the ones down that I'm going to sift. And then we will get started. Now, if you like these screens, um, you can buy them from the Amazon store below in the pinned comment. They fit nicely on a five gallon bucket if you want to do that, um, but you can buy them individually by the sizes that you need for your uses. I use the one quarter inch and the one twelfth inch a lot. Um, the quarter inch gets rid of all of the big pieces and the twelfth inch uh, makes sure I can keep my cocoons. I'm just doing the quarter right now and then I'm going to be taking my cocoons and putting them in a nursery bin uh, because I don't need my castings right now because it's winter. I'm going to take the overs and collect them up and then we can incorporate them into the feeding when we feed blue a little bit later. Then we can see that we are getting into, it's a little bit too wet to sift, so I'll put that back. And then we can get this out of the way and start having an explore and see what's going on. So let's move you down to the far finished end. All right, I had put some avocado pits down here hoping that they would grow it's just the wrong time of year. So what I do have is some little tiny baby worms. This little tiny one, I don't know if you can see him, he's right there. And uh, they're eating the avocado pits. So I'm gonna go ahead and move them to the food end because apparently this is not the right time of year to try and do this. Everything's got its season and growing avocado trees. It's actually kind of spongy. So that goes to the food end. Uh, I don't know. This one still looks kind of yellow. Maybe. But the castings are staying nice and damp in here. I've had uh, you know, like a old lid covering them. So, no, well, this one looks like it's actually getting some roots. So we'll put that one back when we're done. I didn't think I was going to get any takers. Oh, again, this one's getting some roots. This one still looks like it's a viable color, but... So, this I think is an acorn. I don't even think this is an avocado. Yeah, it's hard for me to wrap my brain around avocados in the grocery store nowadays with having had those Florida ones. My brain's just like, ugh, those are inferior. You can't buy those. They're just little. You, you'd need like five of them. Um, so yeah, I actually haven't bought any of the normal avocados that I can get in Illinois lately. This one looks like it might grow too. Maybe. We'll put, them, we'll put the ones back that are surviving and we'll see what they do. But this is looking really good and uh, I'm going to continue to keep keep fluffing it, keep taking out the over overly large material. I just swear I saw a clump of dog hair. Like a long, long time ago I decided I was going to put a clump of dog hair in here and see if they'd eat it. They didn't. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if they don't like pug hair or what, but it'll come out in the sifter. Take 
that out. There we go. And I don't know, with this one, it's kind of hard to tell which ends up. So let's split the difference and put it on its side. The ones we can tell what they are, we'll put them right side up. Yeah, try and get the roots going in the right direction. These will end up like bonsai, so the root base is important to keep them healthy and happy inside of a pot. I'll just stick that in there too. Alright, so I've got them covered back up and then I'm going to start moving things over. Now if this is your first time in the bin, you're probably wondering what the heck is she doing? Um, what I'm doing is kind of an altered wedge method where I start with a very long bin and then uh, basically leave the finished edge alone as far as feeding it goes and then um, take and move everything towards the end where I'm feeding and hopefully the worms will follow. So let's move down a little bit more and keep it going. So I'm just taking anything here that is probably not going to be finished food anytime soon and I'm going to move it down to the other end. Now even though, even though this portion has not been fed in months and months, maybe even three months, four months, still got a large amount of worms in here. Let me know in the comments below, do you think I should like start baiting them out of here or just let them keep going through what may be food down here? I don't know if they're stuck and they don't know they can go that way. I know they do this in nature without me all the time, but I'm not exactly a helicopter worm mama, but probably close. You know, I I know they're not pets, I know they're <laughs> wild animals who manage to do these sorts of things on their own without my help all the time. But let me know in the comments below, would you like bait them out and put them at the other end, or just leave them be to uh, finish up here? Oh, I was talking with somebody the other day about how I um, had cinnamon sticks in my bin and that the worms absolutely do eat them. Um, here's one of the ones that are still left. Doesn't smell like cinnamon anymore. But uh, it's, it's, I think it's wood, isn't it? Cinnamon bark? Just the bark off of a tree? It takes a long time, but they do eat it. So just uh, another kind of... Uh, a look at the size of the worms in this bin. It's going to kind of pick them out a little bit. So these are European night crawlers and red wigglers and blue worms in this bin. And I do find this time of year the blue worms do slow down. But these are all worms that are, you know, an inch and a half long maybe. But, you know, like when you first buy worms, you know, the European night crawlers are six or eight inches long and the red wigglers aren't far behind with their size. And then when they get in a system like this with such huge population density, I thought having them in a very large bin, a 55 gallon bin, would cause them to get a little bigger or allow them to get a little bigger. And I have not found that to be so. I've been running blue for over a year here and the worms are just still saying the small size. Now granted they still do a really good job of composting, not saying anything about that, but they are not getting any bigger for the big bin that they're in. So I am starting to wonder if it isn't about population density rather than because um, you know I feed this thing a lot of food. I mean it gets a lot of food. There's no scrimping on the food for blue here. Um, so I know it's not that they don't have enough. Or maybe it is. I don't know. Put your thoughts below. Why in a 55-gallon bin do you think these worms are still relatively small to what they're capable of being? I mean, I don't... Oops. Looks like I'm getting into the area where it's been fed. Um, so these are tomato skins. They were probably put in, put in here in September. It's uh, Christmas Eve Eve right now. So I'm just going to keep piling that up, making room, and let's slide down a little bit farther. All right, 
still grabbing sticks and stuff and putting that down to the business end here. It is getting a little bit wetter here as well because it's it has been fed more recently than the stuff we were just in a minute ago. And I can, I don't know if you can see it, but I can feel that the bedding is still in here. It's, you can feel the paper fibers um, right now. And if you hear the laundry in the background, uh, yep. Feel the need to multitask. Taking any food stuff and moving it, moving it along. So yeah, just also until it is kind of wet here in the middle. I did add water to it when the furnace, when it was getting really cold here in Illinois. Uh, I did go and add water to the bin uh, so that the worms wouldn't dry out while I was working during the week and not really checking on them very much. So they have had a good amount of moisture in this area right here. Alright, sticker. Okay. So we'll just kind of level that off and I'll swap you around and then we can start looking at the leading edge of the wedge. Okay, so get their little top off. Don't really see any worms on here. If they are, they're super, super tiny. We'll put that back as soon as we can. So let's look. This is the area where I have been feeding. So I think we had our apple and something else. I forgot to watch the video. Uh, pumpkin seeds are starting to sprout. But let's start looking and seeing, because I know we had started feeding most recently right here on the, uh, the center. So let's see what we get. Much deeper concentration of worms, but that apple is, uh, looks like they're into it for sure. But it's, oh come on, I gotta know what's in there. Is it all full of worms? No, not yet. Alright, we'll put it down here. Grabbing all my scraps. Another apple, probably doing about the same thing. Or maybe, it looks like, looks like they're definitely into that one. This stuff is really damp here. So I'm going to move that down a little bit. This must have been where I gave them a couple handfuls of leaves. So the apples, I don't know what this was. I'm just still trying to pick out the stuff. You can tell this is a tea bag string. And the tea bag is gone, but the string is still here. That takes a little bit longer. So, pretty good and wet. I get concerned this time of year about them not having enough moisture, so I sometimes overdo it, which is fine. I'm actually not sure what this is. This is a stem of maybe an onion. Not sure. It's everybody's favorite, every worm person's favorite game. Name that old food. Could have our own game show. Which nobody would watch except for the people who like this channel and other worm channels. All right, still smelling pretty wet. Or not smelling wet, it is wet. So it's good that I've got in here and started flipping things around. Okay, I don't remember what I fed last, but we must be getting close because I'm, I'm seeing a lot of worms. Okay, well, I don't know. Here we go. It's not a proper worm ball, but that is a lot of worms in with those leaves. I don't know what else was in with those leaves. Maybe we'll find a worm ball. Oh, I got a big worm there. 
appears to be of the stumpy variety. Anybody who's watched me for a really long time knows that back in the, the way far beginning, I used to have these European night crawlers that were fat but short. I used to call them stumpies. All right, we've got a lot of worms here, but I'm not seeing a big clump of food anywhere. That, I mean, it's not a worm ball, so that's a little disappointing, but that's a lot of worms all in the same area. It can't be more than two weeks since we looked in on them. There is... no worm ball. So you can see they're just crazy inside all those leaves I put in here. It's funny, there's there's no, you know, people food in here that I'm seeing. I'm seeing a lot of here's the the pumpkin stem, but I'm not seeing any food. Alright, let's keep moving. More leaves. This part's a little bit dry. This is where I've been putting all the dry stuff that I find in the bin. Kind of break that up a little bit. See if there's any food. It looks like even though those stems didn't uh, haven't actually died for real yet, they are. The worms have moved down here to this end of the bin. I couldn't put them outside because there was already worms hanging out on them. Not sure. Some kind of bread maybe? But if I scrape up the far underneath side of the bin you can see they've been mobbing around where these sticks are. Put sticks back down there and flip them over. Then we'll get around to them eventually. So that's pretty surprising this time of year that they've eaten all of their food in less than two weeks. Well, except for those apples, which of course are not fast food. So none of the whatever we fed them <coughs> is still in here. Okay, well then we definitely are going to have to get them some food. We can't have the worms being hungry. Okay, let's let's get them something. Okay. How about some yummy pumpkin? That should make them happy. But let's not be skimpy. They did finish a whole bunch of food in less than two weeks. Okay, so for anybody who's into fungus and knowing about mold and things, purple mold, what's that about? Um, you don't see that very often. Pretty interesting. I mean, it looks like white, white, white mold when it's fuzzy, but then the reaction on the inside with the pumpkin itself is that it turns a little purple. That's interesting. All right, well, let me get them some bedding. All right, let's get some grit first. And I know, crazy amount of grit. But uh, I have somebody who eats a lot of eggs in the house. So we're going to have to use it someplace. Okay. Just take a little bit of the castings, kind of cover them a little bit. Wait, we forgot. This is all of the siftings that we're supposed to get in with the food, which I forgot until I turned around and there they were. So let me get a little bit more bedding to put on top of them. A little super wet bedding there. Hopefully can revive it. There we go. That was a big feeding. Hopefully we'll get a good worm ball next week. 
And then that will be it. If you have any questions about this bin, or if you want to see more, um, I will put a link up above to the last feeding so you can look at that. There's also a playlist for this bin. But if you like this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. And if you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody. Have a good day.